Did you know that Adobe released a powerful new feature inside of Photoshop 2020 and almost no one noticed? Even today, at the time of this recording, it is still not even mentioned in the Adobe page for Photoshop 2020 updates, and I think is one of the best and most powerful new features. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create patterns, vector graphics, color themes, and gradients inside of Photoshop using Adobe Capture. Hi, I'm Asus Ramirez from the Photoshop Training Channel. Adobe Capture is a powerful standalone mobile application that's made its way into Photoshop 2020 without almost anyone noticing it. I found out about it last minute at the Adobe Max conference where I was a speaker and where Adobe released a new version of Photoshop. A designer friend of mine who you might know, Claudie from Print My Soul, told me about it. She is part of the Capture pre-release team, and even though I am part of the Photoshop pre-release team, I still didn't know, so thanks to Claudie for letting me know. Unfortunately, it was already too late for me to update my Photoshop 2020 video, but I did have time to update my sessions, so if you attended the conference, you saw me talk about it there. If not, no worries. This is what this video is all about. Let me show you how that tool works. You can follow along with any images that you like, but this is the document that I'm going to use. It contains three layers, this photo of a woman running, a hand-drawn graphic, and a white background. To reveal this new feature in Photoshop, go into the Libraries panel. If you don't have that open, you can go into Window and Library. Then click on this plus icon to reveal the Add Content options. Then select Create from Image. This window will come up, and this is Adobe Capture inside of Photoshop. Adobe Capture, the mobile app, allows you to create assets from the photos in your phone or photos that you take with your camera. And this version inside of Photoshop allows you to do the same with photos in your computer or layers in your Photoshop document. Notice how it's already trying to create a pattern from our photo. Patterns is selected by default. And we have a preview window here in the center. And to the right, we have the controls. On top, we have the pattern shape. So I can click on any one of these pattern shape presets to determine how my pattern will look. Once I find one that I like, I can adjust the image options, including scale, which makes the image larger, or rotation, which rotates the image. And then from here, you can click and drag to offset the photo. One option that I skipped over was the color mode. You can click on color, and also select grayscale. In this case, I prefer the colors mode. I think that the pattern looks much better in color, but you do have the option of creating a black and white pattern if you like. When you're done creating your pattern, all you need to do is click on Save to Libraries, and that immediately will save to the library you currently have active. In this case, I have a brand new library that I called Capture Tutorial, but you can add this to any of your libraries. I'm going to click on Save to CC Libraries, and you'll see the pattern appear there. Let me close this for now and show you how this asset works. All I need to do is click and drag that asset into my layers panel, and now I have that pattern. I can double click on the pattern thumbnail to bring up the pattern fill options, and I can make adjustments. For example, I can change the scale. I could change it down to 25%, press OK, and I can work with this as my pattern for my design. And this works just like any other layer. I can adjust the opacity. And of course, use a blending mode to blend it with the layers below. Also, keep in mind that you can use this pattern in Adobe Illustrator. You can find it in the Libraries panel there. Next, I'm going to disable these layers. And we're going to work with this hand-drawn image to make it into a vector shape. Once again, I'm going to go into the plus icon. And I'm going to click Create from Image. Photoshop will of course, bring up the capture window and notice it immediately creates this really cool pattern. I actually like it a lot. So maybe I'll save it just to have another pattern. But anyway, go into the shapes tab. And from here, you'll see that Photoshop turned all the pixels in this layer, either white or black. The white pixels will become transparent and the black pixels will become part of the vector shape. And you can use the detail slider to adjust the threshold so we can have fewer pixels that are black or more pixels that are black. It's up to you. In this case, I think that a detail of about 66 works great. You'll notice that there's some spots here that don't necessarily look too good, but you can erase them by clicking on the eraser button and then brushing over them. 
If you need to resize the brush, you can click and drag the slider to the right to make it larger, or click and drag this over to the left to make it smaller. One thing I will point out is that if you're painting and you accidentally make a mistake, unfortunately, you cannot undo. So keep that in mind. There's a few more options that you need to know about. First, you can invert the graphic. In this case, I don't need to do that. I like this much better. And I could also smooth on save, which I definitely want to do because I don't want these jagged edges on my vector graphic. Then I'll click on save to CC libraries to save my brand new vector graphic. And you can see that appearing in my libraries panel. I'm going to close this for now and I'm going to show you how this works. I'm going to disable the line art layer and I'm just going to click and drag my vector graphic onto the layers panel and I can scale it accordingly. And it looks like my background layer does not have opacity at 100%. So let me increase that. There it is, 100% opacity. And this looks much, much better. And just as a side note, if you would like to edit this vector graphic, you will need to open it up in Illustrator. So go to the Libraries panel in Illustrator and drag it onto your working document to edit it. I'm going to enable the photo once again, and I'm going to show you the two other features inside of Capture. I'll click on the plus icon and select create from image. And let's look at color themes. Color themes creates a color palette using a harmonizing engine to find compatible palettes in the photo. And you can use the color mood drop down to select different types of moods. For example, I have colorful selected. You'll notice that all the colors are colorful, but I can select dark and that will select the dark colors in the image. You could also rearrange the colors by simply clicking on one and dragging it over to a new position. You can select the color by clicking on one of these swatches here on the right. When you select the point, you'll notice that it will light up both on the point here over the image and on the actual swatches. So you can select them any way that you want. And then click and drag to select a different color, of course. I'm going to save it to the CC libraries and I'm going to come back to that in a moment. Next, I'm going to click on gradients and this tab allows you to create a gradient based on the colors in the image. By default, your gradient will have three stops, three points, and you can click and drag them anywhere that you want to create your gradient. You can use the slider to reduce the gradient, so you can go down to as few as two stops, or you can have as many as 15 stops. The choice is up to you. I'll bring it back down to two stops and I'll select the green on the tree and the brown on the bricks. Once you have your gradient, you can of course click on save to CC libraries to save the gradient asset into the currently selected library. I'm going to close this for now and I'm just going to show you how the last two work. The color themes are really easy to use. All you need to do is click on one of the colors and notice that it automatically becomes the foreground color. And of course, you can click on any other color swatch to select it. And with the gradients, you can create a gradient fill layer. So I can double click on it and it clips a fill layer to the layer below. If you wanted to apply this gradient as a gradient map, what you need to do is double click on the gradient once it's on the layers panel, then click on the gradient to bring up the gradient editor. And from here, you'll notice the name capture gradient one. You can give it whatever name you want. In this case, I'll leave it at default and I'll click on new. That will appear in my gradients preset. There it is. And I can press OK. I can close out of this and I can delete this gradient fill layer. And if I wanted to apply this gradient as a gradient map, and I can do so by going into the new adjustment layer icon and selecting gradient map. And from the drop down, you'll find your most recently created gradient way at the bottom. And when you click on it, Photoshop will apply it as a gradient map. Next, let me show you what happens when you have no layer selected. To deselect the layer, all you need to do is click on the empty space in the layers panel, like here, way in the bottom. And you go into the libraries panel and you click on that add button and you click on create from image. The window will come up, but there will be no image selected. You can drag any image from your computer onto this box to open it up in the create from image window, or you can click on select the file, or you can click on this plus icon. So I'm going to click on the plus icon and select this image that I have here and click on open. And I can actually open multiple images at the same time. So I'm going to click on open 
and select this image as well and bring that up into this window. So now you could create assets from these images and I could load more images if I need to. And like I said, this is one of my favorite new features in Photoshop 2020. I would love to know what you think. Do you use the mobile application? Do you like it better inside of Photoshop? I think it works much better inside of Photoshop. So let me know down in the comments below what you think. Also, another quick shout out to Claudi from Print My Soul for letting me know about this new feature. You can find Claudi on Instagram at I am Claudi. You can find me at JR from PTC. And if this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, of course, click on that subscribe and notification button so that you don't miss any new tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again in the next video.